everybody, welcome to PC's Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We are here today to discuss uh, the brand new Gigabyte Bricks S. Now this is a platform, a system, a design that has been around for a while, but this time we are looking at it using Intel's new Broadwell architecture, the 14 nanometer Broadwell U architecture. Um, this is, uh, the exact model number of this is the BXI7H5500, and that indicates to you what processor is actually inside this unit. You have the Core i7-5500U, it has the Intel HD Graphics 5500, um, and it is a bare bones system the way Gigabyte sells it to you. This is very similar to uh, kind of what the Nook design is, right? It's a very small form factor system, like square slash cubish in shape. Uh, very small, it's Visa mountable. It comes with a few things in the box. Uh, it comes with that Visa mount here that allows you to basically attach this to the back of a TV or a monitor if you want to do that. Um, you also get uh, an NFC tag a programmable NFC tag, which is interesting because this particular unit that we got shipped has NFC reader on the top of the device. And then um, they give you the drivers and stuff on an optical draw disc, which is, you know, not ideal because this doesn't have an optical drive. And I'm gonna guess not a whole lot of people have external DVD readers or CD readers or whatever. Uh, so this type of system, we definitely like to see them, you know, get rid of that and instead put in a USB drive with the necessary uh, requirements and stuff there. So um, overall experience with this device was very similar to what we have uh, seen with previous Bricks and Nook devices. Uh, the bottom opens up and in there you can add the couple of components that aren't already included. It does, Gigabyte does include uh, the Intel 3160N, uh, 36, 3160 NGW, which is actually an 802.11 AC 1x1 wireless card in uh, with this particular unit. Uh, it uses the M.2 slot on there. Also inside, you'll see two DIMM slots for DDR3L low power memory. You have an MSATA port for storage, and you also have the capability, uh, as designated by the S in the model number here, that you can install a 2.5 inch hard drive as well. Now actually, if you look at the kind of the, the Z height of this unit, that's pretty impressive stuff actually, that you can get MSATA, uh, MPCIe, or I'm sorry, M.2, as well as a two and a half inch drive in there is actually pretty cool. So uh, our test system, we used eight gigs of Kingston memory. We had our 120 gig Kingston MSATA SSD, and the performance numbers are, are pretty impressive. A quick walk around shows uh, up front, you have two USB 3.0 ports and an uh, audio input output connection there for your headphones and your microphone. On the sides, you just have uh, ventilation for the cooler. And on the back, you have your AC power input, a full-size HDMI port, a mini display port connection, uh, a full-size gigabit ethernet port, and two more USB 3.0 ports. And of course, a Kensington lock connector for, so nobody steals your, your bricks off your desk, I guess. Uh, up top, you have the power button and the kind of LED lets you know that it is on, and then the NFC connection, or the NFC spot reader, uh, if you will, there. I will make one comment about the top of it. If, you, if I can angle this right, and we have some pictures as well, this is pretty scuffed up already, and um, this is really just from, in our experience, normal usage. We had it on top of some foam board to take pictures of the bottom of it, but it's not like we were taking pictures on top of gravel. And uh, I, I think the, the, the piano finish on this looked pretty nice when it was new, but as it wore, it started to look not so great. So if you have your phone as your NFC device for whatever reason, and you move it along and, and rub things across it, expect it to get scratched up a little bit and scuffed. So that's something I'd like to see Gigabyte improve on. Uh, otherwise, performance on this device was, was really pretty good. This was our first experience with a newer, higher power 15 watt Broadwell architecture. Uh, in our performance testing, we saw you know, we're comparing it to a Haswell-based Nook primarily, uh, but performance ranged from 10% to 45% better with the uh, Bricks device here than what we saw with the Haswell Nook. Now, some of that is that this is a Core i7 part, whereas the Nook device is using a Core i5-4250U, so there's a little bit of a class difference there. But this is still a two-core, four-threaded processor, right? Um, so it's not, it's not like this is a quad-core part versus dual-core part. It's still dual-core versus dual-core. You're just seeing some of the advantages of the new Broadwell architecture uh, at work there, right? So uh, we looked at handbrake results, X264 encoding. Obviously, you got SciSoft and memory performance, just synthetics there. And then in terms of graphics performance, the uh, Broadwell... SOC was actually, it was well, much faster than the Haswell result, but it's actually um, turning in 
3D Mark scores almost equivalent to the A10 5800K AMD APU. This is, again, from the end of 2012. It's a little bit older part, but it was a 100-watt processor, and this is a 15-watt TDP processor. So that's actually pretty impressive results there. If you want to play League of Legends and Dota and Portal and stuff like that, you'll be able to do that on this device, but it does not have a discrete GPU. So uh, if you're looking for a small form factor gaming machine, this is probably not what I would recommend. Uh, NFC usage was interesting. They include a little application for you to uh, program and utilize this key, or you can use your phone or whatever. But uh, at this time, at least, you can only either open a specific file or open a specific web address when you do that. Now, if you're creative, you maybe could create a bat file that it opens that does a bunch of things for you, opens up all of your normal applications. You have that capability to do so. Um, but we'd like to see some more like, hey, integrate it so that we can log in when we set our NFC chip down or our phone down. Or that's kind of like some of the, the interesting ideas you could get behind uh, with NFC. Pricing, you're looking at $509 for the bare bones configuration of this. That is uh, processor and everything uh, without memory or storage. So you will have to add DDR3 L SODIM memory and you will have to add either an MSATA or a two and a half inch drive or both depending on what you want to do. And that's one of the flexibility options that it offers. You could have a 240 gig MSATA SSD but then a two terabyte two and a half inch drive and you can fit all of that inside this tiny little thing that you can then maybe, you know, mount to the back of a TV like this, or even a, a normal computer monitor that has a, a Visa mount. But it does start at 509. As we tested it, uh, it was about 750 to $760, depending on what the pricing is today. That's for eight gigs of memory and a single 120 gig MSATA SSD. Uh, so not the you know most robust system in terms of storage. I think you'd want to add a little bit more to that. But you also have the option with those USB 3.0 ports to extend to external storage options as well. Uh, not a bargain, not a budget machine. I don't think the bricks or the Nook devices have ever really been that. I'd like to see them get a little bit lower cost for that. This is more for the person or, or business that has restrictions on space or you want something that's kind of cool or neat looking. You know, you can put this on a desk, you can put this in a home theater, you can put this in a dorm room, and you're going to get all the performance you need for everyday computing. You know, I think photo editing, maybe really, really small, low amounts of video editing if you want to do that as well. But, you know, it'll be able to handle large Excel sheets, you know, things like that that you do in a business world as well that require fairly high performance gaming, uh, high-end video editing. This is not the machine for you. And I think realistically, if you're looking at a $750 to $800 price range, there can be a lot of people out there that will say, hey, I can build a pretty good DIY full-size ATX PC for that same range. And you're absolutely right but you are paying for kind of the size here. This is essentially Ultrabook components in a four inch by four inch by two inch box, right? So uh, very interesting devices. We're looking forward to looking, uh, seeing more of these types of things. We have the Intel Nook here, uh, and I'm also very curious to see what Gigabyte will be able to do if they introduce uh, like a, a discrete GPU with this, something based on Maxwell that's extremely power efficient. Maybe we can get a, a gaming iteration of this that is, quiet and cool and very efficient at the same time. So go to PCPer.com, check out the full review. We have your benchmarks and photos and teardowns and all that stuff included in that story as well. Uh, and for now, we'll keep an eye on how this small form factor world changes as Broadwell filters out. Thanks, guys.